it's late at night, the dishwasher's on, I feel like making a real classic. How about that one? I think this is a, an absolutely gorgeous aircraft. Funny face aside, uh, it is just a fantastic bit of design all round. Even down to the single thick struts and the, the low upper wing. Just amazing. Um, but once again, I have to take my hat off to the Germans. Usually it's um, the Germans' tank design in the Second World War. But I have to say, I think the Germans in the First World War had aircraft design really, you know, really superbly sorted. Um, British aircraft tend to look like trucks with wings. Uh, whereas, I know some of the British aircraft were fantastic flyers, but come on, look at this. Think of the Albatross. Uh, just superb aircraft. So this is what we're going to have a go at. So I'll get everything out of the box and I'll think about quite how I'm going to get a really nice white finish. Because I never find white easy in any type of paint. And I forgot to mention it's one of those uh, special edition uh, ones. And this one is of somebody whose name I can't read. Von Schilder. I think I'll have a look at the instructions and see where we go. It's and I've just had a thought. This is second hand off the internet, eBay. I hope it's all there. It looks nice and simple. I do, I loved the figures when I was a kid. Uh, mm, better have a look. Edward von Schlich. Um, various bits and pieces are, are mentioned. There's a little section in the instructions on him. And in particular, it says in September 1917, he shot uh, his sort of group shot down 41 Allied aircraft, 17 of which fell to his own guns. He gained a total of 27 victories before moving on to command other groups. Um, it also mentions that flying alone, he saw, this is incredible, flying alone he saw six up with camels, uh, made a carefully planned surprise attack on them. Within five minutes he had shot down three of the six camels. That's like two minutes each, or less than, isn't it? Which is just amazing. Um, shortly after this success he was promoted and a month later received the military Max Joseph Order, an honour which brought with it a ranking of nobility, becoming Eduard Ritter von Schlich. He survived the First World War with a total of 35 victories. Good grief, man! Uh, that's very impressive, particularly becoming an aristocrat. Mm, pretty, you know, that doesn't happen very often, does it? So you can see why they've... Uh, marked him out for a little model. So we'll have him as the pilot, I suppose. Well, on the surface of it, it looks like everything's there. Big sprue, look at that. Anyway, the only bit which seems to have come off is that seat. I cannot see any other problems. There we go. I feel confident to proceed. So I better add then, hadn't I? Apologies for the sneeze earlier on. Had to go. Right, a bit of painting's gone on and I've got a very nice white. Um, it's very matte, which is what I usually have in my whites. Um, and it'd be nice if it was a bit gloss, so we'll see what we can do at the end and then engine, little men, guns and seat. So, uh, I think we're ready to start building. See how it goes. And a bit of fuselage done. A little 
uh, windows in and the pilot who needs a little bit of tidying up and uh oh his little hands come off uh oh an injury in the field right anyway yeah I'll have to think about what to do about that uh, the engines going in now I should have put the engine in before I put the two sides of the fuselage together you knew that you could see that coming so it's a bit of a wiggle but we got there in the end and now the tail plane is done and the bottom wing I think it's probably time to put our rear gunner in on the basis of the previous problem so the fella at the back um, I wanted him to be leaning out and shooting sideways as he appears to be doing on the box cover yeah there he is and although I've got him on the right point his gun is on the other side in the picture to the way I've done it never mind he looks cool I like him I was always impressed by the very specific characters specific to this model um, they're really good so happy with that and then we have the beginnings of the wings going on time to pause to let things harden the tail in particular is a bit wobbly and I've ended up with ooh, cross knives that means there's going to be an argument uh, but it's coming along it's going okay you can see a splodge of glue on the left hand wing strut nasty just a quick look because all the parts are on uh, just got the markings to do and I found a little stand this doesn't come with the model um, this was just happened to be lying around which is very convenient and it's going to blow over because it's a fantastic day but I've never known there not be a breeze here it's a very interesting location but there we go um, apart from the tyres which I'm still battling with painting them uh, it's gone quite well I am moderately pleased <laughs> which is you know that's a bit that's saying something for me I'm really truly pleased but there we go look at that beauty that is so everything's gone together marvelously well um, the wheels and the so I tried to say something, but the wind was blowing, I should have realised. And there's our government that's trying to curtail freedom of speech. All they need was a wind machine. Anyway, for a moment there's a lull and I say something else. Because I've got some paperwork to tidy up and stuff. But the only real lasting structural problem is the usual obligatory kind of seam down the centre line. Which you can just see a little bit off there. Well, that's about it. It gets worse. You wouldn't believe it on a lovely day like that. Listen. I'm going to leave the seam so that when we get the complete thing, we kind of go, okay, that's, that's how it comes out. Basically, I'm saying that it went together rather nicely. It's a great bit of retro, you know, that kind of thing. I haven't painted the tyres brilliantly. I'll have to have another go. And then I say, in some kind of feeble way, the camera works a bit shaky because I'm leaning over a barbed wire fence and I got my shirt caught, which I had. And then the wind blew harder and I had trouble getting off. Anyway, there we go. And all I'm really looking for is some, a decent patch of blue sky with nothing else. And there we are. At last we have it. And there is our truly fantastic looking aircraft so tidy up the paintwork put the markings on don't do any damage while you're doing that 
and we should be done. And we are done. I've got the markings on. I've trimmed up the paintwork. Uh, it's one of those things you think, yeah, I've trimmed up the paintwork. And then you see it in the daylight. Uh, and the things aren't as good as you thought, but so far. Then I go on to say, I'm not going to put any of the wires on. And I've forgotten to trim the kind of overlapping film on the tail marking, which is a bit of a shame. So I'll knock that off later. And also, uh, <laughs> why I was battling against the wind, I just don't know. Not only is it a beautiful aircraft, but it's called Roland. What a great name. Uh, and Airfix have come up with the one which has a machine gun at the front and the back. The original one only had a rear firing machine gun. Um, it is a great model. Go out and get your hands on it. It's proper modelling enjoyment, this one. Um, it is a pleasure to build. Not tons of detail, not tons of fiddly parts, all of that. It's just the pleasure of model making. And of course, I've really uh, built this at the wrong time of year because more often than not, these films are absolute field. fields are absolute quagmires. Uh, and it'd be nice to have just a bit of kind of muck like the front line, but no. It's a rich and grassy, leafy world we have today. Anyway, there's the track. At least that's grotty. Here we are, the Roland flying low over muck. Right, that's enough of that. Let's get some blue sky. Lovely. Just a couple of little things from the instructions leaflet. Uh, I've got a nice big book on um, First World War aircraft, but I can't get to it at the moment. I've put a load of boxes in front. Anyway, the Roland uh, started production in October 1915. That's not bad, is it? And um, its design greatly influenced the trend of many future German aircraft. I can think of um, the Albatross, for instance. Magnificent plane. And nicknamed the Whale, hence the funny face, I'm sure. Uh, the British ace Albert Ball described the Roland in the summer of 1916 as the best German machine now. Her guns fire backwards and forwards and everywhere except below. And that's what comes of good lines and good design really, isn't it? So, it was a, a, a very impressive aircraft, which... Um, you know, that's great, but I I tend to go for the aesthetics, don't I? And this is a good looking aircraft. Very original in so many ways as well. But anyway, we've got it now, it's done. Um, I do keep wondering about doing the tensioning cables. Uh, but, I, you know, when you're like at an air show and you take photographs and stuff, if the thing's not stationary in front of you, you can hardly see them, and you must, to get it real, you must, or to get it authentic, uh, you must have to use human hair or something. So I'm, I'm, I'm reserve judgment on that kind of thing at the moment, and I'm just making the model as it comes. And it came out of the box, so to speak, marvellously. Uh, as I was trying to say in the windy section, there were so few problems with it, it just fell together, which was really good. Um, and it does have that nostalgia quality to it. Uh, even the way all the parts are like arranged on the sprue just takes you back in time. So, it's a kind of a thoroughly good model all round, um, and I enjoyed it very much. I think it looks alright out there. <laughs> uh, and as usual, I'm not going to dabble with with the seams and things because I want to know, I want to be certain about what it is you get out of the box. And was I rubbish at making models when I was a kid? And the answer is I was better than I am now.
as usual. So there we go. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, folks. An, a neat and tidy little aircraft to keep us going for a few days. Um, I enjoyed making it and I think it's wonderful. And I've got it up on the window sill at home. So thank you for watching. Hopefully I'll be back soon, as ever. It's always a bit dubious. And, um, well, yeah, see you as soon as possible. Cheers.